well, after 20 faithful years of service from my Miller Matic 251 welder, uh, beautiful welder, works great, digital control. Now, this isn't a welder. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. I just wanted to show you that it was plugged in. Um, this welder is not a welder that is uh, programmable. This is the type of welder you got to program yourself. doesn't have settings in there, preset settings and all that. This is not a Y2K compatible today's state-of-the-art welder. This is a real MIG welder. I purchased this back in approximately 2000, uh, maybe 1999, I don't know. But after 20 years of service, um, our liner needs to be replaced. Believe it or not, that does happen. So what we're going to do is I'm going to try to manipulate my way through showing you how to replace the liner in this welder right here. Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. replacing any liners or taking anything apart is you're going to want to reach around you're going to want to unplug your welder make sure the power is off completely to it and then the next thing we're going to do is we are going to unravel our welder and cable housing and then once we get that done once we get that all unravel we're going to lay this out on the floor and we're going to stretch it out so it's completely flat and there's no twists in it so you want to make sure that it's laid out nice and even on the ground just like that so we're going to disconnect the electricity right here you just saw me do that then we're going to come inside our machine right here and we are going to disconnect the mechanism from the machine itself. So before we do that, we literally have to uh, get the wire off of the cable. And we need to cut that wire off. So I'm going to go ahead and reach back here. I'm going to cut my wire. And we're not going to let go of that wire because if we let go of the wire, what's going to happen? Go ahead, tell me. Go ahead, leave a comment. What's going to happen if we let go of that wire? All right, you see what I'm doing here? I'm putting it in a hole and wrapping it around so it won't untangle. Once that's done, we can now proceed to remove our welder. Uh, what is the name of this thing? I don't even have a name for it. I guess trigger. We're going to call it the trigger. We're going to go ahead and re remove the trigger from the machine. And this is where it removes right here. You're going to take this handle. You're going to unscrew it. And then you're going to gently pull your trigger out. Nice and easy. And it should come out. Here it comes. Okay. So we got to be really, really careful pulling that out because there's O-rings on the end of this. And I want to show you that. Okay. So when you're pulling your trigger out of the machine, um, watch that those O-rings don't break. you got to put those O-rings because 
That's where our gas comes into the trigger to make everything possible. All right, now that we got our trigger assembly disconnected from our machine, the next thing we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and remove our nozzle, just like that. And then we're going to go ahead and snip the wire, just like this. And then we are going to remove the tip, just like that. And I would like to say that this is an authentic Miller trigger system. This is not a Tweco, but I will also let you know that um, if you're working with a Tweco or another style, it's the same thing. So what you're looking at me do here basically applies to all MIG welders. Um, then we're going to take this section here off. I don't know what it's called, but we're going to take that off just like that. We're going to go ahead and remove that. And then pay close attention. You can see right here how far that's sticking out. Okay. And this is our liner. This is where our liner is. Um, like I said, this liner is approximately 20 years old and it's time to replace it. So when we install our gas nozzle back on, we got to make sure that we have enough of our liner sticking out that will go inside here. And this is actually not enough. This liner is really jacked up and um, needs replaced. There should be approximately a quarter inch sticking out. Now that we got our wire out, we're going to go ahead and lay that back down on the ground just like that making sure it's nice and level and flat. All right, now that we have removed everything on the trigger end of our trigger cable, we are going to come down to the end that goes into the machine. And if we look right here, you can see that this is a nut that screws in. This is actually the liner. So we are going to unscrew that. And anybody out there that wants to know what these are, these are actually Miller uh, pliers. These are Miller welder pliers, very handy and very nice to have. So if you get a chance to pick a set of these up, get them because they really do work well. So I am going to unscrew my liner from the trigger assembly. And it's going to feel a little bit hard when you're unscrewing it because you're actually twisting the liner while you are uh, unscrewing it. And one more thing to pay attention to when you get your new liner, make sure that there is a uh, O-ring on the end of that liner and we'll be checking that to make sure. And when you're pulling this out, it might seem a little hard to get out and that's because the liner's been in there for a very long time. And once you get it started, it should flow out nice and easy. Just like that. And if we look right here, folks, look what we found. We found a break and a kink in our liner. And that is what can cause your wire to sputter, to shake and jerk, and to not run properly. And this is why liners have to be replaced. So what we got here, we got a replacement liner. Now this is made by a company called Radnor. This is not made by um, Miller because the Miller brand is approximately three to five times higher in price than the Radnor. So I decided to go with the Radnor. Now one other thing that you want to do before you purchase a liner is you want to make sure that you know exactly what type of wire you are using 
in your welder. And when I say that, I'm talking about size. Uh, everything from 020 up to 035. If you are using an 020 wire and that's all you're using, then just get the liner for that wire. But if you are using a variance of wires, such as my friend Pete does, then you'll want to buy the 035 wire uh, liner. That will cover all sizes. So it's very important to make sure that you get the right liner that you want. If you use variant sizes, get this size right here, the 035. So we got Minnie the Body Shop Girl way back there, and I believe I got a 15 foot liner. I mean, a 15 foot trigger is what I have. Um, and Minnie the Body Shop Girl has uh, volunteered to help. Am I right? Yeah, okay. I didn't really volunteer, but... Yeah, well, okay, so she volunteered to help. And one more thing I'd like to say um, is. If you have a set of second hands, it's always good to have them help you due to the fact that this, especially if you got a 15 foot uh, trigger, pushing this liner through that trigger without somebody helping and holding it to stretch it out can be a little bit vigorous. And I'm also going to look at the end and I see that that does have a uh, O-ring on it, so we're good on that aspect. And then I'm going to go ahead and stretch my liner out in a nice straight manner, making sure to get all the kinks out and that it's not twisted or bent in any way, shape, or form. And then if Minnie, the body shop girl, she can hold her in, kind of stretch it out. And then basically all it is is putting the liner back in. And then many will see it coming out there. You'll know when you get to the end because it's going to be kind of hard because it's going to have to clear that uh, the aluminum part. And it should be coming through any time. Yes, yeah, right here. There it is. Okay. All right. Now you can go ahead and put that down. I think I can get it from here. Thank you very much. Many of the body shop girl, what are you doing today? Many of the body shop girl over here in Moab, Utah, wishing we were out razoring and hiking and everything else. What are you doing? Okay, so we're taping off the Nightmare Mercedes, getting it ready to put in primer. Yep. Let's get her done. i got to prime that thing today. Okay. And we're going to be looking at that really soon here, so uh, stay tuned. But right now, we need to get the welder done. we got Mustangs to work on. Wild horses are in the shop today. Okay, back to what we were talking about. So you're going to take your liner and basically push your liner down, and then you're going to screw that on to your trigger uh, nozzle in and then you're going to get your pliers like this and make sure that the o-ring seats good you always want that o-ring must seat very good so I did have a kink in mine and that is one of the reasons uh, I was having issues okay you want to make sure that that's nice and snug we don't want vibrations and everything else uh, tearing it off as we are using it so make sure it's nice and snug I've seen people use uh, crescent wrenches this that and the other so now that we got this done we're gonna go ahead and hook it back into our machine alright before I put my trigger back into the machine remember those o-rings I was telling you about well these o-rings are pretty old I've already inspected them and they seem to be in really good shape and I want to make sure that they slide in there without breaking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some air tool oil and I'm just going to put a couple drops on there. And then what I'll do is I will uh, massage the rubber O-ring so it is lubed. So I'm just going to get a little bit of oil on my finger, just like that. We don't want to drip it all over the floor. This is not a mechanic shop. And then we're going to lube up. There we go, just like that. Okay. Too much lube slipped out of my hands. And then we're going to go ahead and reverse our process by putting our trigger back into the machine. And we're going to be very careful. We don't want to... 
Okay, we're going to line it up, and then we're going to tighten down our knob, just like that. Let me get that on there nice and tight. And then once that's done, we're going to come back over here, and we're going to go ahead and hook our electrical back to our machine. Now, one thing about this, this only fits on one way. So make sure that you have it properly. Uh, when you put it in there, what you'll want to do is you are going to slide it on there and then you will turn it until it fits in place just like that. All right, it only fits on one way. So we're gonna put it in there and then twist it until it slides in. And then we'll go ahead and screw it down for a nice snug fit. All right, now that we got our liner in, we got our trigger mounted back into the machine, the next thing we want to do is we want to trim off the excess of our liner. So I'm going to take my nozzle just like this, and once again, that goes up in there approximately a quarter inch. So I'm going to kind of eyeball it right here. And then I'm looking at it, and you know, I think that was actually cut at the right length. Um, you don't want to cut these too short, because if you cut it too short, you're going to screw yourself. So we're going to go ahead and cut it off. I'm going to count one, two, three. I'm counting four turns on that. And I'm going to go ahead and cut that off right there. And that's about how it was when we took it out. And then another thing you want to make sure of, you don't want anything binding up on the end where you cut it off, so you want to make sure to trim that. And make sure to trim that back. And that's going to make sure that the wire goes through freely without any uh, angulations or uh, destructions in the way. We're going to go ahead and screw our nozzle back on and this is the nozzle that is for our gas. This is our gas nozzle. Remember that? Then we're going to take our handy pliers and we will snug that down and it doesn't have to be super tight but it does have to be tight enough. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and turn my welder on and I'm going to run my wire through so we can go ahead and finish this out. So we're going to go ahead and pull our wire out very carefully not to let go of it. And then we're going to go ahead and trim that end off, that nasty end, making it nice and clean just like that. And then we're going to go ahead and re-thread our wire back through our machine and into our trigger. Once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and mention this, okay, because this is a thorough, detailed video of how to do this. A lot of the videos you're watching out there, they only show you how to put the liner in. They don't show you how to reset up your machine. And a lot of the situations you're going to come across is when you put your roller back down and then snap it all back together, you're going to have to readjust this. And the reason I'm saying that is because it's probably too tight now. Um, when your liner wears out on you, when your liner of your trigger wears out, your welding wire liner, what happens, welding gun liner, what happens is that you end up tightening your uh, tensioner down more and more and more because you kind of think, well, it can't be this, it can't be that, it must be this. All right? And, and, and normally, nine out of ten times, it's your liner, and I showed you that where the kink was in my liner. So what we're going to do here is we're going to back this off, and there's a little number gauge on here. And I'm going to go ahead and back that off to about two. Where are we at here? Okay, a little bit above two. Um, it was down on three, but I backed it off to two. 
And then, once we got our, our wire fed into our liner, we're going to reach around here to the front. I've already plugged the machine in. We're going to turn it on. And then I'm also going to turn the speed of the welder on high, the wire speed itself. So we got that all the way up to 700%. Let's go ahead and feed our wire through, and hopefully everything will work out great. When you feed your wire through your liner and through your gun, make sure that you have a big loop, okay? I don't know if you can see that where I'm at, but there's a big loop. We don't have any twists, we don't have any binds in it, very important. Well, let's go ahead and get this wire out so we can finish this video off. And I noticed that the wire is moving very, very quickly. I don't feel any vibration in my trigger. If I felt vibration, that means that it's binding up somewhere. And it looks like we got everything set. It should be coming out here any minute. There it is right there. Okay, everything's working normal. I believe this is, I got to loosen that. I'm going to loosen that just about a half a turn more. Um, we're going to go ahead and put our tip on. This is an 022 wire. I'm going to put an 022 tip back on it. You never want to use a bigger tip than what the wire is. That will bind it up and that will ruin your welder. So if you're using 022 wire or 023, use an 022 tip or 023. Another thing we're going to do, and I always keep these for spares, I'm going to go ahead and replace my nozzle with a brand new one. And there you go, folks. This is a done deal. We're ready to start welding once again. And that was an easy job. Easy job, easy peasy, easy pickings, and, and very simple that you can do yourself, just like my friend Pete did over here at DIY Auto School, doing it right, doing it right, doing it right, because if we're not doing it right, we definitely ain't doing it at all. watching DIY Automotive School. Classes don't stop till you know everything.